All right. Well, crap. <laughs> What's that? Five losses in a row. Oh, three and two. Back to back losses to the what people are calling the COVID Canucks. Now, last game, fans were quite upset. And I looked at it as like bottle half full, as instead of bottle half empty. What I mean by that is I looked at the positives from the Leafs game, and Leafs dominated every aspect of the game, bar goaltending. Braden Holtby deserved that win. It's a great feel good story for Vancouver. All right, they lost, they lost an OT. Um, tonight, I'm still going to look at it bottle half full because honestly, I'll just feel like crap if I, if I just focus on the negatives. Um, I do have to say, once again, Holtby outplayed, well, this time it was Riddick, not Campbell. Um, and that was basically it. The Leafs outshot them again. Vancouver, what a what a story though. That's I think that's the the bottle half full thing. My mindset's not even on the Leafs. Like they're gonna make the playoffs. Um, they might end up being first, second, or third. Who knows? But Vancouver, there's something about it. Like if this was a loss against Montreal, let's say, yeah, I'd be fuming. I'd be I'd be really upset. And I'm not I'm not saying I'm happy about the loss. Obviously not. However, it's a feel good story for Vancouver. Like they can still make the playoffs. They can do it. Why not? I'm going for it. Like, good good on them. Good on them. Uh, they beat the top team back to back. Yeah, Leafs are on like a little bit of a downside here. But still, good on Vancouver. <laughs> good on Vancouver. Um, so let's get to the this game, shall we? This game that Vancouver once again pulled off, come from behind. Good for you guys. Um, Pre-game, no Hyman, no Dermot, and no Superman, so no Micaiah. Um, D pairs look like, well, they did Riley and Hall. Uh, Bogos Bogosian's playing with Sandine. Um, I like Sandine. I do. I think he's he's in it for for the long run. And you see at the end of the game where they had the, you know, what, six skaters on there before Sutter scored. Sandine was out there. I think he can take over Riley's spot. I do. I do. I think he can quarterback. Um, I like him. Um, so he plays Bogosian and then Hall and Riley, uh, Brody and Muzzin. Um, Riddick was in that. Uh, Engvall, Jumbo Joe, and Simmons were a line, and that scared me at the beginning of the game because all I could think of was turnover central. Kerfoot played with JT and Will William Nylander. Um, now, all I can think of is I can't wait for Felino to get in because I wonder where he's going to slot in. Um, Kerfoot, JT, and Willie played well. William Nylander is he's been on another gear since returning. JT is obviously multi-point games, um, but I would really like to see uh, Robertson in that that spot. If I posted a video. It'll be on later on about what my ideal or what I see the Leafs playoff lines could look like. Um, and spoiler alert, I have Robertson in there and Angval out and Kerfoot filling in there. Angval can't win a draw anyway, so why not throw Kerfoot in there? Um, yeah, uh, so we go into the first period and, you know, Robertson, he made a, speaking of him anyway, he made a really good play on the back check on Highmore at one point, really liked that. Um, but I wrote down for this start of the game, Steve Dangle, if you don't listen to the Steve Dangle podcast, or his LFR, the Leaf Reactions. They're bloody hilarious. Uh, sometimes he drives me absolutely nuts with his takes. Um, but I'm just going to call it pure love of the Leafs. Uh, but he's going to have a field day, not just with the start, but obviously with the finish as well. Um, bad start. Vancouver was much better than the Leafs. Um, obviously, Highmore got a good chance. Besser got a good chance. They all got sent in. They were getting behind the Leafs D early and often, but again, good back checks by Rob. Riley made a good back check on the Leafs. That was nice. Or on, um, I forget who it was, might have been Besser. Um, yeah, it was Besser. He made a nice like diving back check, slide, get the puck. That was really good. And then after being, I would say, not dominated, but outworked by Vancouver, 
the Leafs are able to score first. And it's literally because Tyler Myers, who had a fantastic game last game, he, he pops a tire at the blue line. William Nylander with speed beats him. Shooting from basically the same spot he scored last game. He went low this time. Save, rebound, save, stays with it, brings it behind the net, finds JT as Miller went to the JT Miller went to the wrong post. Tavares went to the right post, pots it in. And you know what? The Leafs start to bring it on with about five minutes to go. Obviously, they get it going and get, they get the goal. Um, and then chaos to end the first period. Um, I wrote down William Nylander looks great again. Holpe, he's able to stop Matthews at the end on, on like a half breakaway there. Um, Vancouver did look very discombobulated at the end of the first period. Uh, there was a couple injuries. Roussel got injured. A couple, I don't even know, errant sticks. Um, Leafs were all over him, but they survive. one nothing. Leafs going into the second period. Uh, second period early, some points here. Matthews almost bats one out of the air from Mitch Marner. Um, then what, 14-27, Vancouver ends up tying it. Um, it was a point shot, but I think it was Myers, tipped by Besser, and it hits the side of the net and somehow pops back out front, which was weird. Sutter's there to pot in the rebound. Um, what I did note here is Sutter got behind Tavares there, so he obviously beat him to the puck. Uh, Riley also didn't box out his man as well. If it wasn't Sutter, it was someone else potting that in. Um, it was a good shot by Myers, good tip. Um, right after that, though, Leafs come flying out with Marner, Galchenyuk, and Matthews. Matthews set up Marner with a one-timer. Matthews gets the rebound, uh, but he's stopped. Again, Braden Holby based over, I think, what was it, 40 shots this game? Well done to him. Uh, Spezza then just goes on a two-on-one with Brooks, fakes a slap shot, goes around, just misses Brooks in front of the net, and then something scary. Uh, Bogosian's going back for the puck. Horvat's on him. Still lots of space, and Bogosian trips. Like, it looks like he hit an edge. He goes hard into the boards, and that was scary. Holy crap. But the beast gets up. He just got up and skated off. Horvat was calling the, the trainers to come out, and Bogosian just was, like, pissed off at himself. It looked like got up, skated off. Just wow. The man's a machine. Um, right following that, though, Jack Hughes, not Jack Hughes, Quinn Hughes scores uh, to make it 2-1. It deflects off Marner, high glove. Uh, Riddick looks a little bit, looked a little bit pissed at Hall there, and I think it was just because Hughes came down and Hall looked at him and then didn't go out to get him, so Marner did, and then deflection. Um, I think he was more pissed off at Hall for not taking the man and giving him a, a free shot. It sucks that it deflected. If it didn't deflect... You would think Riddick had, would have it, but we all remember Pearson's goal at the end of the game, so you never know. Um, right after that, Holtby robs Jumbo Joe in front of the net. Joe's snake bitten, I tell you. He's snake bitten. Um, I have him not in the lineup for the playoffs. Um, he's been struggling lately, but when he gets his chances still, he's getting stopped. It sucks for him. Um, so, yeah, 2-1 Vancouver. And then uh, Leafs end up getting on the power play based off of William Nylander and his speed and driving to the net. Um, Leafs, uh, just before they actually get the power play, they had great puck possession, uh, exhausted the Vancouver Canucks. Um, but all I could think of was like, oh yeah, when was the last time Toronto scored on the power play? All oh, right, five minutes at the tail end after Zach Hyman got hurt. Good thing they say he's only going to be two weeks with that MCL sprain, I think. Oh, which is good because I need him. He needs to get some rest, fuel up, and he'll be ready to go tearing it up. Um, Vancouver do really well on this penalty kill. That, I just got to say that. They kept the Leafs to the outside until the Leafs make a just a subtle swap. And Matthews and Tavares switch spots. And it was like Vancouver forgot that JT can snipe. Uh, William Nylander also with the beautiful screen in front. Tavares scores top corner, went over the blocker, I believe. Yeah, short side blocker. Um, great screen by Willie. 2-2. Two -two. Um, so we go into the third period, and yeah, uh, Brooksy, he does it. He gives him the lead. Uh, the man's only played three games, I think, and he's got two goals. 
And it's all from Marner. Goes to the blue line, um, the least blue line. The defender goes to uh, step up. Marner tips it around him. He goes. He feeds Hall. Stays with the play. Hall shoots. Far pad. Besser should have had this puck. But he skates over the puck. Marner picks it up. Feeds Brooks. Wide open net. Horvat fled the zone right away. And it makes sense. I thought Besser had it too. And they were easily out. But he missed it. And... Can't make an easier goal than that, especially Mitch Marner passing you that puck. So, yeah, goal. And it's 3-2 Leafs. And now, about my video that I made that will be posted later on. Um, for the Leafs, that will be extras. I didn't even include Adam Brooks on there, and that was silly of me. Like, look at that, two goals in three games. Um, he should have been on there, so that's my bad. If you go and watch that video or listen to that video later, his name doesn't come up. It should have. Um, so yeah, we carry on third period, um, and what happens? Oh, Leafs take a penalty, of course, they take a penalty, but they they kill it off. And right after the penalty, uh, they throw out that Willie J T Matthews uh, group, and it's insane after a like a penalty kill because they they were just dominant. Just too bad they couldn't score. Um, and then following that, Kerfoot and them come out, and Kerfoot literally gets pitchforked. He gets pitchforked. Even commentators were like, that, that's not a penalty. Um, everyone was shocked. And, of course, what happens after that? Uh, Hoglander comes out. He's gone down the left side. He's bursting with speed, and he just takes a slap shot, like what you would see back in the 80s. Just takes a slap shot, and it goes through Riddick. Goes through him. Doesn't hit anything. I thought it might have hit Hall's stick. Nope. Straight in through Riddick. And it's tied 3-3. I think they said Hoglander, if I can remember correctly, he tied the last one for the come comeback. Uh, he does it again here. Uh-oh. You know, Leafs, they, they are outplaying them. And then that happens. And then Brody takes a cross-checking penalty. And Pearson scores to make it 4-3. Um, Good setup by Vancouver. Leafs came to the outside. Then Miller blasted a puck on net. And Pearson's there to just pot it open, pot it open into the open net. Um, the D just let him sit there. Again, they got behind the D, just like uh, the setter goal before. They make it 4-3. And then it goes right downhill because two minutes after that, um, bless him, Kerfa, you know, he gets pitchforked right after Hoglander scores. Then... He misplays the puck at, I think it was around the red line. Um, I think he was trying to just chip it in deep. He gets beat there, or we'll call it a turnover. And Pearson gets it, and he's going along the boards. Similar to Hoglander, but closer to the boards. Terrible angle, and he just shoots. It looked like Riddick was like Patrick Laleen back there in uh, the playoffs, like uh, with Joe Neuendijk. Um, he just fires it, and it somehow goes in. Somehow goes in. And it's 5-3 Vancouver. Um, and the Leafs just can't score because Braden Holtby is, for some reason, back to being Braden Holtby in Washington with Barry Trotz. Uh, <laughs> I guess the, the rest worked for him. He played great. Uh, Toronto couldn't solve him. And I must say, I can't wait to watch the LFR with Steve Dangle after, uh, probably tomorrow when it comes out because he is going to be red-faced. He, he's going to have a panic attack. Heck, bless him. Hopefully he doesn't have a heart attack. Because uh, he's going to be losing his mind. The Leafs gave up another lead to what people have been called the COVID Canucks. And I guess now, you know, maybe you look at this game as the bottle half empty. Only positive I can see is Leafs outplayed them again. But silly mistakes. They got out goaltend. Do we miss Freddie Anderson yet? Uh, in my video later, I, I do expect Freddie Anderson to be the number one, by the way. I want him to be. Um, I love Campbell. I love Riddick. But I still see Freddie as the number one. It's his, it's his to lose. Um, but yeah, Vancouver, you know what? They came back. They're feisty. And they have something to fight for. And they can make the playoffs. They have to go on a massive run. And it does help that they beat the top team twice in a row. I, I'm not even... I'm mad. I'm mad. The Leafs shouldn't have lost. But at the same time, it was against Vancouver and, heck, 
If Vancouver makes it, that means Montreal doesn't, so I'd be happy. Uh, so here are my final thoughts. Um, and all it is is Toronto, the pure focus right now, it should just be uh, limiting those silly mistakes. And that's all it is. It's just they switch off for that half second, and that's what costs them. Riddick obviously switched off during that Pearson second goal. Um, getting caught with players behind them. I'm sorry, but Jimmy Vesey shouldn't be getting behind you. Um, especially when you're back already, like they shouldn't get behind you. Uh, not boxing out or just looking the wrong way. It's just ill-timed decisions. For them, it's not like big blaring for me, uh, for the Leafs. Right now, I think it's, it's more just focusing on the little things and fine-tuning. And they've got, what, 10 games to do that now? Fine-tuned for the playoffs? That's what they need to do. Soon, uh, lineup change is going to happen. Felino's coming in. That'll be fun. Uh, maybe Big Ben Hutton gets in as well. Um, so we'll see what happens. Freddie's skating again. I want to know what their capologist is going to do to, to sort out all that. That'll be fun for him, I'm sure. But yeah, let me know what you think. Toronto Maple Leafs give up another lead, lose to the COVID Vancouver Canucks, who are fighting for their playoff lives. They have a, they have a story to tell right now, and I hope they can pull it off. As a Leafs fan, yes, I'm upset about losing. But as a hockey fan, good on you, Vancouver. That's it for me. Please let me know what you thought of the game, what you think about the Leafs' future. Uh, going forward into the playoffs, please check out my later video um, on my ideal forward lines, uh, D and goaltending. And yeah, take care everyone. Let's hopefully this slide, this five game winless streak ends soon, preferably next game. And that's it. All right. Go Leafs go.